Mine's the Taylor student part, but the not doing it part. Questions from this worksheet? Uh, from worksheet one or two. Worksheet two. We need to do a couple of them just to make sure we're on the right path here. Get our brains going. If it's addition or adding a negative, it's part of arithmetic. If it's multiplying or dividing, it's the geometric thing. Mm -hmm. If it's most of the time it's fractions, it's not anything. If it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> if it's weird, it's neither. Like, I haven't seen one that's not a fraction. Is there any of them that aren't fractions that are neither? Yeah, there was one, in fact, in this in this lesson that was not fractions, that was neither. Um, which one was it? Number four? Because there wasn't any in the notes. Can we do four then? Because four, if it's... <coughs> so you, like, you just have to check and see. if it's, Is it addition? Definitely not. Adding three, adding five, adding seven. Uh, wait a minute, that's not addition, but that is a pattern. Um, so it's it's not arithmetic for sure. Geometric would mean we're multiplying by something. And it's like, well, I don't know exactly what all those multipliers are, but from five to ten would be multiplying by two, and none of those others were multiplying by two. So it's not geometric. But we sort of almost discovered something when we were thinking about arithmetic, because this was three, five. Seven. It's not the even, but it's the odd. Nine, eleven. So this is like something's going on here. So we're adding an extra two every so time. So I think to get to the ninth four, term, four, five, six, seven. rather so than plus two and the next one down. But that means it's neither because um, it has two down. Right, and rather than try to come up with an equation, which maybe we could, maybe we couldn't, maybe we should just count our way to 9. That's probably the easiest way to get there. There is an equation. You might could figure it out, but it's probably easiest to just say, is it equation times two? let's add 13. That would get us to 50. Then let's add 15. That would get us to 65. What term are we on here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One more. So we'll add 17. And that would be 82. So that's a neither problem. It's almost like it's but second order arithmetic, so like the yeah, second, second order, difference. Is that a thing or not? It is. It also means that the formula will have an n squared in it. But that's more than we need to worry about. So technically, if we put arithmetic, we could do that. No, it's not arithmetic. No. No. Okay. I mean, if you want to like make up some term that it's second order arithmetic, eh, maybe. But no, it is not arithmetic. In calculus, would that be a thing? No, but in calculus, we might ask you to figure out what that, what the formula is. And if you start out thinking that it's n squared, or at least knowing that much, it's really just n squared plus 1. 1 squared plus 1, 2 squared plus 1, 3 squared plus 1. But we don't have to do that. As long as we saw that we're adding an extra 2 every time, we can just kind of work our way up <coughs> to the ninth term. Other questions? That was a neither. Do we need to do an arithmetic or a geometric? Um, like one of the ones on the back where they just kind of get crazy and just give us nine. strange problems. Nine. Number nine. Fractions. Fractions. Uh, is it arithmetic, geometric, or neither? Can you tell by looking? I think it's geometric because it looks like a sub n equals a1 times r to the n minus 1. If you don't see that, well, then you just, you're just going to have to plug in some values. So if you plug in 1, um, 1 third to the 0 is 1. That would be 81. If we plug in 2, that's 81 times a third is 27. And you start to realize that we're multiplying by a third each time, which that makes sense because there's R right there. If the sequence is arithmetic, it's not, so we throw that out. If the sequence is geometric, what's R? Again, some people can locate R just looking at the equation, one third. 
Other people are like, I'm not sure what's going on. Let me write out some terms and then realize, oh, R is one third. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those. Like, uh, and it kind of depends on the problem. This would be about as easy as it gets to locate R. Sometimes you can't quite tell. But you can always write out terms. Find the value of A8. So that would be 81 times 1 third to the 7th, which without a calculator. Um, what's, what's 81 as 3 to a power? Kind of work our way backwards on this one. 3 to the 4th over 3 to the 7th. 7 minus 4 is 3. So 1 over 27. This is a no calculator test. So you need to be able to do this sort of math without a calculator. All right, that was a geometric. Let's do one that's arithmetic, and then we'll move on. Um, let's do number 11. Given that an is arithmetic, a5 is 53, a9 is 73. Okay, so this is the step thing. Some people are going to draw out the steps. Other people are just going to say, well, if I'm going from 5 to 9, how many steps is that? Four. So some people are going to say 53 plus four steps is 73. Other people are going to write out 53 and then term 6, 7, 8, 9 to 73 and then realize that 53 plus four steps is 73. So you, you get there either way. If you need to show the steps, that's fine. So D equals 5. A4 equals 48. And then if we want A4, then all I need to do is back up 1. Right? That's the fifth term. So some people will back all the way up to the first term and write the formula and then figure out A4. But the better way is to say, wait a minute, I'm almost at A4. Why don't I just back up 5 more? and get the 48. Yeah. It doesn't ask for A1, so I don't really need to do that. If it had asked for something way out there, like A27, well then I wouldn't draw all of these, but I would just figure out, well, how many steps is it from 5 to 27? And multiply by that many steps. We do 12, because it goes from negative to positive. OK, we'll do 12. And we'll move on. B3 to B6. Again, same kind of thing. B3, 4 and 5, we don't know. B6 is 96. So negative 12 times R3 times is 96. Or just from 3 to 6 is 3 steps, either way. So R cubed is negative 8 means r is negative 2. We didn't do this on the last one, but if you fill in the blanks, you can sort of check. Not sort of. You can check. If I multiply by negative 2, I get 24. Times negative 2 is negative 48. Times negative 2 is 96. I feel really good about r being negative 2. Find the value of b7. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, just one more. So again, I don't have to write the formula. I can just multiply by negative 2 one more time. That would be negative 192. So sometimes it's helpful to write the formula. Other times you can just kind of step your way forward or backwards until you find the term that you're looking for.